This is a HeadGum Podcast. So uh, I give you the option to sit wherever you'd like. How you much does it here? Chair or a chair. Where here? are you going? Here? Is this okay. okay? Yeah, it's fine. And I'll uh, um, put this over here. Um, I'm going to get a water. How about that? Do you want anything? I'm good. Thank you. you. A... I think I need to grab it. Okay. Okay. What's the name of your dog? Lucia Caterina. Um, what's her middle name? Caterina. Lucia. Her name is Lucia, but then her full name is Lucia Caterina. Yeah, but what's her middle name? Caterina. What's her last name? Uh, uh, Cho. <laughs> did, did you all get married? Yes. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> She's my daughter. She's my dog daughter. What kind of dog is that? This is a Chihuahua. She's a oh, Chihuahua. I should, know like that. A, I should know that. She's like a Chihuahua mix. Uh, she's a Chihuahua Dalmatian. Which I don't really Chihuahua see. Chihuahua Dalmatian. I don't see the Dalmatian part at all. Boy, not at all. Mm-mm. Oh, now they see her butt. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I can see it now. She's, this she's got a girl. Dalmatian asshole. Is it? Oh, it's like. It's like she she is longer than most. She's like this much longer, mm-hmm. like thirty three percent longer. Uh, sh- show me this thing. I want to look at the the alf- this. So that's like a, made for. It's made for dogs and cats. So wow. I have cats too. So they jump in here. A little kangarooish. It's very kangarooish, and it's really handy. Yeah, um, I'll, she I'll loves say. it. Yeah, she loves it. So we I'm, just we just got a dog. Uh, our family just got oh, a yeah. dog uh, a week and a half ago uh, at this point. Wow. Yeah. You never had one? No, no. God, I had one. Yeah, I had, uh, I mean, I grew up with a dog. Yeah. And then uh, um, that dog, uh, they had to put it down when I was nine. Um, and then I had a dog um, for 15, over 15 years that I had to put down about a year and a half ago. Oh, my God. And... Um, I should have done it sooner. It was just, it was ridiculous. It's hard not. I, mean, I know, and I, but I knew that. And it and it, it bummed me out that I was susceptible to that. I mean, that she, she was in a diaper and I had to carry her down, yeah. up and down stairs. It was just, you know, I should have done it sooner. But um, but yeah, I love that dog. That was Ollie, Red Sox. And, uh, and then and my daughter really liked Ollie and, and took her loss, uh, uh, much harder than my wife and I uh, anticipated, mm. and then we've been talking about getting a dog, and um, and so we did. We uh, we had to get a. Uh, unfortunately, we had to get a hypoallergenic dog because Amber is allergic to uh, a lot of stuff, but also dogs, and um, so we had to go to this place. Otherwise, it would have gone gotten a rescue. You know, uh, I don't like the idea of breeding dogs for. Anyway, but we had no choice. It was either that or no dog. So, did you get like a Portuguese water, water like the a water torture? The Port- water, I, we had a port- I got. A, I before we went to get the dog, I got water tortured <laughs> by a Portuguese man. Right, right. Uh, that's what he said. Um, <laughs> I don't speak the language. Um, but those are those are uh, like hypoallergenic or like a. Uh, as in golden doodles? Yeah, yeah. Well, what we got was a Bernadoodle, which is a mountain, a Bernese mountain oh, yeah, dog, yeah, yeah. and a poodle. But it's way more Bernese mountain it's beautiful. than uh, than poodle. Is it a puppy? Yeah. Oh, cute. Oh, no, I mean, you know, we got it. It was seven weeks old. Wow. Yeah, it was uh, brand new. That's great. Yeah. Um, and she's she's pretty smart. She's really taken the. Oh. She, and when we got her, she had never seen a city before like she was yeah. out in the country in like uh rural up like outside of buffalo and we drove up to because it was a surprise for my daughter's birthday and uh, you know to pick one out so we went to this woman's house who does that stuff um super christian it was weird it was a christian town mm-hmm. which i never would have guessed it, it's um a little tiny little place in uh north uh, West New York state. And, um, uh, and there's a Christian college, a small Christian college. And mm-hmm. then the, the hotel we stayed at was, was very like, um, 
kind of very grandma-ish, you know, you go mm-hmm. in and there's nobody there. It was just like, here are your keys and an envelope. Um, and there, there were only like 12 rooms, I think. Yeah. And when you walked in, they still had all the Christmas stuff up and they, and it took a second to, uh, for it all to sink in. And there's like, you know, John 316 stuff and posters yeah. and, you know, inspirational biblical posters. And then, uh, and then I, they have like games, like a little thing by a TV and nobody's there. There's nobody there. And, uh, um, and you know, biblical trivia and, you know, really fun shit that kids love. <laughs> and, uh, and then, um, and then I've noticed, oh, they're playing a uh, Christian music station and it was uh-huh. all Christian, the whole, the, the, and the vibe. And then this woman's house, she had, all, you know, also the affirmations about, you know, and things, things that, um, you know, uh, you know, Jesus's strength and love and all that stuff. It's so weird when it's like really like um, when they mix it into the patina of the place so that you don't notice. Like there was a town like that that I lived in when I was working in Georgia. It was Peachtree City. And oh, yeah. Everything was like really like coded, very Christian, but it was so far down into the mix of everything. Like there was like a barbecue place and it was all of the people that it was like a family's place, but they were all uh, in this one group photo and they were all wearing white robes and it was so creepy. You mean like KKK robes? Not with the hood, but like choir robes, but they were oh, white. right. Of course. Okay. But so they weren't. Okay. It was, but it was like but weird. But it brought that to mind. It was very Because you were in Georgia. But a casual, casual KKK without yeah. the hood. Right. Like, you know, like a very- it's a modern. Today's modern yeah. KKK. <laughs> It's had... in your daddy's KKK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but it's like that feeling of like a weird, it's where they're all wearing these white robes and you think, oh, is this a baptism? And they had a sign next to it that said, this all began with the love of a man and a woman. And it was like 50 people. It was just weird. Yeah, they're the, uh, it's the, um, the, the Dugers. Very Dugers. Yeah. But very good barbecue, but because it was mustard based. Really? That's uh, South Carolina. Yeah. So I, it was like, it was like, oh, you rarely find that in Georgia. Themed to that. So it was Southern Cal- Carolina style barbecue. Mm-hmm. Boy, you, you don't find that in Georgia no. very often at all. No, it's good. Interesting. Delicious. I'm not a fan of the you mustard. You don't like it? No. I, I mean, it's okay. I don't, I, I prefer it to like the, the ridiculously uh, sweet sauce. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I don't like those. I don't like that kind of barbecue. I'm a. I'm like North Carolina. Uh, mm. I'm a big, you know, vinegar hot sauce kind mm. of. Mop. That's wonderful. That's my favorite. That's really delicious. It is. Uh, it's that's my personal favorite for barbecue. Yes, and uh, I agree. Um, and it, you shouldn't have to put sauce on it. You really no, shouldn't. You shouldn't. You, you should shouldn't. Not. It should just be the smoke mm-hmm. and then the the slow cooking. Then the char, you know, the br- uh, the um, what do you call it? The br- uh, the what do you call it? The outside, the crust the has bark. a name. Bark. Thank you. Yes. It's so good. Yep. It's so. Uh, I, I like all the other stuff too. Like I like um, whatever they have, whether that's like the cornbread or the beans and mm-hmm. all of that. I think it's like the cumulative effect of the barbecue. Not, it's not so much just, beans, uh, like- but in Georgia, you get the the one. F- kind of barbecue-ish adjacent food that is specific to Georgia's Brunswick stew, which I really like, which is chicken. Oh. It's like a it's like a chicken tomato-y uh, with corn and lima beans, and uh, it's really good. It's called sounds, Brunswick stew. It sounds like, yeah, it sounds like succotash or something. Sounds uh, good. No, it's more, uh, it's more of a stew, mm-hmm. you know? Um, I mean, it's maybe has a little succotash qualities to well, it. Anything with lima beans. Lima beans you don't come across. Nope. Nope. And you yeah. don't really notice them because I hate lima beans. I really don't. Why don't. do you hate lima beans? Uh, they raped my father. <laughs> uh, because uh, they don't taste good to me and I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the texture. And I'm not a big lima bean fan. They're kind of mealy. Yeah. And I don't it's, like the, the, it's got a kind of a uh, slight sulfur quality to it that mm. I don't care for. Mm. Um, mm. Hi. How old? Five. Oh. Um, okay. She's I think really, that I'm trying in, to think what's- uh, uh, She's it's either, 
She's into you. Well, it's either soap or was I eating some uh, everything, everything but the bagel, um, spice or you know uh, seasoned nuts. So she might be. Oh yeah. yeah, might be a little salt. She's into you. Um, and then uh, where? So boy, Peachtree City. That's uh, um, and that's that's where you were staying. I lived in Peachtree City for like three years, and then I got an apartment actually on um, in Midtown, like on mm-hmm. Peachtree mm-hmm. Boulevard or whatever. The, uh, but I was working there on there on a series. Peachtree so Street. Peachtree, Peachtree Street. Street. And, but oh, you know everything's Peachtree. In Atlanta, there are a bunch of peach trees. Yeah, yeah. There's... I like I like living in the city of Atlanta. I think Atlanta is a great city, but Peach Tree City is very boring. Yeah, I I, I was surprised when uh, when you told me you were living there, uh, and I understand being somewhere because it's uh, the proximity to set, and you know Atlanta traffic's just awful, horrendous. It's so hard, and but then I I just sucked it up to like because I would rather just drive an hour yeah. th- to and from. Then live there all the time. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I, I understand. Um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, Atlanta traffic's awful. Um, it's so awful, but it was like, you know, I kind of just sort of like, I, I preferred being able to just live in the city, and then I could just go to the Beaufort Highway and eat whatever, like good, yeah. good. Oh man, you have you been to the farmers market on Beaufort yeah, Highway? Yeah, Holy yeah, Holy shit, incredible. It's. One of the most amazing things, I, I, the first time I went there, I was just like, it was, I was overwhelmed. I yeah. was uh, overwhelmed with emotion. But, uh, and I, I also remember, you know, one of the sections, it's a massive uh, store, food, you know, produce, everything um, with all, with every food from all over the world and their own uh, huge seafood department that's mm-hmm. the size of a regular Kroger's. Each yeah. department is massive and butchers and uh, um, and uh, the prices are ridiculously cheap. And uh, like they have their own chicharrones thing mm-hmm. where they make, I mean, it's, it's incredible. I, I stopped counting. Uh, I remember being like kind of when you walk in towards the right, there's all the um, fruits and vegetables and they had... I got up to 11, I just stopped counting different types of eggplants, mm-hmm. varieties of eggplants I didn't even know existed. Yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, it's like a football field big. Incredible. And it's, uh, yeah, the prices are crazy good and uh, and they have everything. They have everything and it's um, all really fresh and it's just it's just a fun experience to go to the market itself. Yeah, I, I love it. Yeah. I, I mean, I... I been there now, you know, several times. Yeah. Know. Even if I don't have to go there, I just, just like fun. going. Yeah. When I, when I travel, when I go abroad, the I if not the first thing I do, I always go to a grocery store, and yeah. not with the intention of buying a bunch of stuff, but just to check it out. And I just see. like to look at it. Mm-hmm. I like to look at it and see, and um, you know, uh, it's just very interesting to see what the dairy is like, like what kind of milks and things that they have, or yogurts, or boxes of milk. Yeah. Which uh, makes cheese. sense. Yep. I love cheese. A box of cheese. I love <laughs> all of it. And just boxes. It's so uh, good. I, like, I go to the box store <laughs> and saying, hey, well, do any of these boxes have food in them? <laughs> and uh, and then, you know, I have a translator on my mm-hmm. phone. And then, um, and then they, uh, you know, politely kick me out. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, I'm going to tell you something that uh, that I don't know if you'll remember this, but it, it's stuck with me, obviously, and I've told it several times, and Amber um, will, my wife, will bring it up occasionally. Um, you and I were driving to San Francisco, uh, which we used to go all the time, mm-hmm. uh, big groups of us, and, you know... Um, and sometimes, you know, just individual cars or whatever. And, and we were both working. And uh, and so we drove up to San Francisco from L.A. And you made an observation that is very astute. And you said you can always tell when, when especially like if you're uh, traveling on fi- the five, mm-hmm. right? Uh, not not the one or the one on one necessarily, but the five going from L.A. to San Francisco. And once you get over the grapevine, uh, you can always tell if there's. Uh, 
if there's uh, a large uh, Mexican population because all the cinnamon jolly ranchers are gone. <laughs> And it's true. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's really a, it was a really good observation. Yeah. yeah. That's the way you can tell. <laughs> yeah, that's how you know. I mean, it's like a, I don't know, maybe nowadays it would be more, now there's more diversity in those uh, gas station snacks. Mm -hmm. So you would have things that may be more ke uh, kind of like catering. Right, to the flaming taquitos or yeah. tackies. Or, or they whatever. would have like um, tamarind mm -hmm. flavored um Kinds or it's things that are like covered in talkies, mm -hmm. like talkie, uh, like gummies covered in talkie, or like gum the tamarind chili limon. Yeah, chi like the chili limon or tahine, yeah. tahine, tahine uh, yeah. covered gummies, which is now like sort of taken. Yeah, over. that's true. That was, uh, um, you know, I've I've been driving great distances cross country numerous times since I was, you know, eighteen. Mm -hmm. Pretty much, and uh, and especially as a you know working comic on the road, you do a lot of traveling, and uh, the the difference in the availability of uh, and the amenities that are on the road now are, I mean, it's night and day. There used to be you had no choice. There was no Starbucks, so you had no, no. choice but to drink that shitty acid based yeah. uh, gas station coffee sometimes Awful. just to be able to drive through the night it was terrible and and you you know there were no fruit juices like um what's a juice company you know that the green machine or whatever like oh, none of those yeah, things yeah. available none of those, yeah you know the the closest you get was like high c or something or like uh there was just no energy drinks i mean i don't no. like those really either but there was nothing like that yeah I mean, maybe you would have Joel Cola. There was no Cola. dose. Uh, no dose. Yeah. Oh, Joel Cola. That's yeah. right. Joel, Joel Cola, yeah. which had double the caffeine and double right. the sugar. Yeah. And that was what you would use as a sort of proxy yeah, energy Yeah, poor drink. man's meth, you know. And no dose. And no dose. Yeah, we had uh, Viverin. Oh, remember mini that? thins. Do you remember mini thins? The that mint? was like trucker, trucker speed. Mini no. thins were like um, kind of up mm -hmm. by the counter, which we'd check out. They were these little, they were like nodos, but they were, I think it was like ephedrine. Yeah. So they were small doses of like a high, uh, like like a high caffeine pill, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, I don't remember mini thins. Mini thins were, uh, yeah, me and, um, we would always take those, like me and Karen would, would always get those and come back and- Karen Kilgariff. Karen Kilgariff. One of the trips that you and I took it was from San Francisco. We actually left after a show at the Improv. So it was super late. We probably mm -hmm. left San Francisco around midnight. And to get then, back to LA? To get back yeah. to LA. And I remember that was the week that I decided I was gay. So then I wouldn't stop coming out to you. And I felt so bad because <laughs> you, you were so once. tired. Because <laughs> you I really only have to. I came out to you maybe four or five times during that trip. Because it, I, I think we we weren't even we didn't have a tape to listen to. I think we didn't have any radio. I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I remember coming out to you, and then I I couldn't stop coming out. Yeah, I guess. And it's... then the, do you remember the heat, heat was really it was too hot, dude. I I didn't I don't I didn't I can't I didn't remember the coming out thing, but I do remember you were sleeping right, and I was driving I think, and you were mm -hmm. sleeping, and the heat. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not like a big heat guy, but you were, you would wake up to turn it either off or down or up. I can't remember, but mm -hmm. whatever it was, it made me physically very uncomfortable. <laughs> I think it was you wanted the heat on. Yeah. And I was like, this is way too fuck. It's 90 degrees in here. Yeah. And then, uh, and then you go back to sleep and then I would turn the heat down and then seven, eight minutes later you go... <laughs> Wake up, turn the heat up, <laughs> go back to sleep. We did that for about three hundred miles. Yeah, I think I was I was so exhausted from coming out so much that I had is that, to is that really a turn a the heat up exhausting thing? No, I don't know what it was. I had it was I was uh, you know with the relationship I was in uh, was with a woman, and I realize now how inappropriate. Wait, a woman? <laughs> no, what? <laughs> she was my age now. I'm fifty five. She was in her. Like mid fifties. Wow. Who and, did I know her? Did I meet her? No, I don't think you met her. She, huh. uh, uh, but she was so much older than me. And You're now not I'm thinking like of Chris Isaac, are you? Because he's a man. 
No, no, that that I, I, I he was younger, younger. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and, and and he is a man. That was that was a little I bit later. I teed that up for you, and you didn't. You. you did not knock it out of the park. <laughs> I didn't. I just lay. Just it just sort foul. of tapped it, and it dribbled down, <laughs> and I had to put it back on the foul. tea stand. <laughs> um, but yeah, that so seems kind of old. I don't think I would feel comfortable dating an eighteen. I was probably eighteen. I don't think I would. were you eighteen. Really? About no. that time, I was eighteen, eighteen, nineteen, maybe. I think so. Oh man. I think we were no, pretty young. No, 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 no. Because I didn't, I, I didn't move to LA until I was, um, unless I was just staying with Janine or something. What, what, you you were just staying with Janine. You hadn't oh. moved to LA yet. This was Shit, like early okay. on. This was night like when you came with Craig. Craig. Craig, um, that horrible friend of yours. He was so mean. <laughs> he was Ooh. blonde and he had who glasses. Are you talking about? Your friend Craig. And I don't he, know who I you're talking a, about. You don't know. Blonde with glasses. And he, um, so he, I had a bag that said, like, it was like some sort of like a Craig. weird designer bag, but then it would said it's a New York, London, Paris, <laughs> whatever. And he mm -hmm. goes, he came and he said, where did you get it? New York, London, or Paris? And I was like, so, I was so mad. Um, don't you remember, Craig? Well, first of all, that doesn't sound like a mean thing it's not it's just stupid no i think you overreacted i overreacted uh, and i was i also i don't know but why you've harbored this thing for for, for 40, 40 years <laughs> <laughs> my friend craig who i don't know who you don't you're talking remember? about uh was he in cross comedy maybe no craig Did, was there a craig no there was no there was uh i'm trying to it, was he a comic uh i don't believe he was a comic janine hated him too Jenny's like, Who the oh, fuck is oh, fucking Craig. I hated him. From Boston? From Boston. Ah. Uh, boy, I don't. Wait, you said blonde hair and glasses? Yeah. Was it Chris? Maybe Chris it's Chris. Chino? Maybe it's Chris. He's the only one that kind of would fit that description. Uh... Huh, okay. Anyway. That's the, what I remember. I'm going to break up with him. Yeah, you don't just don't talk to him anymore. Uh, yeah. Do you ever feel like money is just flying out of your account and you have no idea where it's going? It could be all those subscriptions. Think about it. Between streaming services, fitness apps, delivery services, parenting apps, it's endless. If I asked you how many subscriptions you have, would you be able to list all of them and how much you're paying? Probably not. Rocket Money can help you find out what subscriptions you're actually spending money on. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has helped save its members an average of $720 a year with over 500 million in canceled subscriptions. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash census. That's rocketmoney.com slash senses. Rocketmoney.com slash senses. I also remember the photo that you took at Sears. Yeah, yes. Which yep. is at the uh, in the kids section yep. where they had like um, the, the carpeted stairs for the baby. Yep. And then you had like perched your body up on them like you were a, a newborn. Like block, they had like the ABC blocks and yeah. toys and stuff. The reason I did it is because I got some potential gig and they're like, mm -hmm. can you send headshots? And I didn't have any headshots. So the cheapest thing to do <laughs> was to go to the Sears Portrait Studio in Santa yeah. Monica. And it was, you know, they had a coupon, you know, because they want to sell you multiple uh, copies of like the eight by tens and the wallet size. And I just got the cheapest package. And, you know, as opposed to going to some... <laughs> guy and you know having the whole fucking thing for 150 dollars or however much they charge and all that stuff i just got uh i got i went to the uh yeah the baby photography student they were like sure get in there and it was like 40 <laughs> bucks and i got the package which was you know i didn't the wallet size weren't going to do anything for me but i got like four you know eight by tens that yeah. i was able to send to the club and i got letra set and I just put, print it, put it, you know, stuck them on the thing. And then that was my headshot. It was so funny. 
Do yeah. you still have that shot? Somewhere do you have a Eddie? I don't I don't have it, but it it's been reprinted in the uh the Mr. Show What Happened book. It's, oh, good, uh, good. There's a copy of it. You can see it. I have to see it because it's such a funny photo because your eyes are unfocused. <laughs> yes. You took it like a baby, which Yes, I, I did. I, you were in looking character. Looking off to the side with this kind of wry smile. It's so funny. And you had quite long hair. Oh, I still had uh, Jufro. Yeah, that was early. That yeah. was uh, That was pretty early. So that was, yeah, Jufro. I hadn't really started balding yet. Uh, and glasses. Um, yeah. So funny. <laughs> So it's so funny. Also, the other thing I remember is when you did um, a set at the improv and you actually did a um, not, not what is it like a somersault in the air? You flipped all the way around like a three. No. You did. You, you, I can't do that. I would have broken my neck. It was in before you do that, that, that song with the in excess song. Holy shit. That's going way back. Yeah. So, wow. And you you flipped all the way around because like, I, I was so shocked that you did. And I think you just used the physical momentum of spinning the microphone. But yeah. then also, so the Man, microphone. that's an old, old bit. Yeah. I mean, that's a crazy, that's like, wow, man. Boy, you and I go way, way back. Yeah. But you flipped all that. the way around. I, I really do think you did flip all the way around. You don't remember flipping no, all the way around? No, no. I mean, I've done, I you know, used to do that bit. It was the guy who was uh, hyperventilating and it mm-hmm. turns into uh, <laughs> the guy who was like, you ever, you know, I can't remember the the context of it or the, the premise, but it's about um, when you're a kid in school and you're, you're it's, it, you know, I said something or was doing this other bit. And it's like when you're, uh, when you're uh, in school and you're caught doing something bad when you're a little kid. And, and then, you know, they can't, uh, they end up hyperventilating when they're explaining like, no, because, um, all right, I was, and, and then the, and then it starts hyperventilating and it gets pretty manic. And then the in excess song <laughs> kicks in and then I start dancing and it's just dumb, weird. It's so good. <laughs> weird. It's really exciting. That I would never do. Any, you know, that's <laughs> very much a, you know, uh, 20 year old me stand up thing. Which is like, I think, uh, I mean, still like, you know, I think back in the period and there, there are things that really stick with me that I never forgot. Like there was one sketch that you did. I don't know if it was act. It wasn't Mr. Show, but it was a predecessor to Mr. Show, where you do doing something with Laura Keitlinger, and mm-hmm. you were in front of a kitchen sink, and you were wearing um, like a 1930s like boudoir silk jump jumpsuit. What? And uh, you, uh, is it corduroy? And you slapped <laughs> Laura, and she slapped you. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> it was something like a weird, I don't know what it was, but it was like a domestic scene, but you were like French. Oh, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was a film. Yeah. Yeah, okay, that was Louis, Louis C.K. Uh, so it was, uh, and and Laura and I were in it. He wrote it. It was, um, it was, uh the premise, well, yeah, it was like black and white, and uh, it was one of the first things he did. It was, um, it was like uh, elementary school French, but delivered with very, you know, like a, a you know, art house, you know, yeah. dans ma pache, you know, and then <laughs> all the things were, and then it was subtitled like the book is on the chair, and yeah. it was all that stuff, and then. Yeah, that was no, that was a Louis. Uh, we we do that across comedy. Yeah, 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 and uh, yeah, that was Louis. That was it. Was cro- yeah, it was cross comedy. Yeah, um, yeah, that was fun. That was a funny thing. It was so it was, funny. But yeah. do you remember? It was like a a nineteen thirties like silk short. Uh, like, I don't remember outfit. that so much, but uh, but makes sense. It was very. It was very good. Okay, that would have been in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. Um it, it was so uh, I the Boston the only thing comparable to the Boston scene comedy wise stand up comedy was San Francisco mm-hmm. cuz you you're two big you know magnets were New York and LA and uh um but as far as like you know the indie 
uh, creative, uh, like this, the, the scene of, uh, almost like an, you know, an artistic community, you know, mm -hmm. out in, uh, Joshua tree or something like that, or Marfa, Texas or something like that. But it was, uh, but you know, they were, they were, uh, hyper creative and, and, you know, fertile ground for, uh, you know, what eventually became called the uh, alternative scene, which there is no alternative anymore. But, um, uh, yeah, Boston and San Francisco were, were quite comparable and there's no, no other place like it. Not no. Houston, not Chicago. I'm trying to think of other, there were, there were no. little scenes like Seattle, but nothing, nothing like, uh, Boston and San Francisco. Where did you stay in like uh, do like because in San Francisco people would stay at Ron Lynch's. Where did people stay when they went to Boston? Uh, I mean, sometimes people would crash at our. You know, I was I was in a bunch of different places, but there were. Uh, I mean, I, I had several roommates. Uh, you know, and over the years in different places, and people would crash there. It depends on who it was. Uh, mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes maybe John Ennis. You know, stay at oh, Ennis's. I, yeah. Uh, um, I'm trying to think, uh, Kozlowski sometimes. Oh, right. Stay yeah. Paul Kozlowski. I mean, just various, mm -hmm. you know, whoever had a place. I never went, I only played Boston a couple of times. I mean, I go there now, but back then, like I would go and I would do shows at like the Comedy Connection mm -hmm. and I would always do so poorly that. Uh, everybody would come out from the green, green room to watch me because I would be bombing so bad. Like the silence yeah. would be so deafening that people would have to come out and watch and see why. I've never I've never seen you bomb, but were you a good bomber or no? No, because I just um, get mad mm -hmm. and then I don't know how to exit gracefully. Mm -hmm. And then I will stay on for far longer than I should. That a lot of, that's, that's kind of like a, you know, a, uh, common rookie move that I think we all have been guilty of that thing where you, you're like, I'm going to go out on a laugh, God damn it. You know, yeah. and you just end up and people, everyone is sensing yourself as well. Like get the fuck <laughs> off. Nobody gives a shit. It's okay to not get off on a laugh. Yeah. Just go, please go. Yeah. I just won't get off. And then I get so uh, somehow indignant about it. Yeah. No, everybody goes through that. Everybody, it's, it's really it, it's really immature, and I don't know what to do. Like I get, I I'm really I get really befuddled. Well, that you still don't have that I, happen, do you? Not uh, in the same way. Like, mm -hmm. and if it is going poorly, then I just leave. Mm -hmm. You know, because I'm like, I don't. Well, that's the right thing to do. I don't have to do. I I don't have to do anything. It's fine. Yeah. You know, it's totally. And you fine. said you you uh, you know get a little uh. uh Fire accelerator, light something on fire, walk out. Just that, that's, yeah. get an accelerant. Any yeah. kind of accelerant will do. That's what I meant. Yeah. A, a accelerant, yes. <laughs> but it's really like, it's so disheartening when you are just trying. I, I think um, nowadays when it happens, it's more like, oh, I did this to myself. Like, because I did it like a terror, like I took a terrible corporate gig mm -hmm. or something where I just have, no, they don't want comedy at all. Mm -hmm. They don't, they don't want this. That's the worst. I. Uh, it turned out okay. I'll, 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 I'll preface it with it was actually okay. But I took this um, a couple years ago. Took this gig that I would never, ever in a million years. But they paid me a lot of money mm -hmm. to go to a suburb in Chicago, and it was like a a, a company, but small business party. Right, um, and they're big fans, uh, and and it was like I think it was combo like birthday party and their company or Christmas party. I don't know whatever whatever it was, and I never would have done it except they offered me a, a substantial amount of money, and I was like, okay, I'll 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 go, and it <laughs> it turned out it's like I want to say maybe. 40 people, 35 people mm -hmm. in a restaurant that they had just sort of shut down this room in the restaurant, this area, and there's no place to put me. And I'm just sort of hanging out until it's time. There's no stage. Mm -hmm. It's literally, and like, you know, I have one of those like Radio Shack mics. And uh, 
and it was just ridiculous. And all they wanted, you know, they were just kind of drunk at, by the time I got on there and like, Tobias, you know, rest development stuff. And, um, and again, it was fine. They were, they were lovely, but not interested in stand up really. And it was just weird because I'm, I'm just standing there in at their table mm-hmm. <laughs> and just doing, trying to do 35 minutes. It was just a way, very <laughs> uncomfortable, awkward. That's so much time to do. Too. Yeah, I know. That's hard. It was, it was, but you know, again, they were just goof. It was goofy and weird, and you know, and I'm the kind of person who, you know, constantly commenting on it and how awkward it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, but they, they were nice. It was just, yeah, not. I should have, I should have said, okay, what if you give me half the money and I'll just come and take pictures with everybody? <laughs> we don't have to mm-hmm. do this, the pretense of telling my act, you know, doing my act. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The last one I did was kind of like a, it was for um, Canadian labor union leaders. It was a oh, big, that sounds good. Y- huge like labor convention yeah. thing. Mm-hmm. And, and it was in Canada and it was like just to look for different ways to talk about unionizing and talk about, um, and it was also trying to address gay issues and trying to talk about gender in a new way mm-hmm. and stuff. And so it was just very, but it was it was just a weird thing because it was like weird to try to introduce comedy into something that is really like it was in the middle of the day, and so it was not set up for that. Daytime comedy is not good. Comedy. The worst, and Daytime especially if it's no like good. all in the in the midst of people making speeches about yeah. labor issues. So it was very um, discombobulating. Is it beer? Is it hot in here? Well, I'm. I'll run cold, so I'm always oh, cold. All right. Um, do, do you mean me to come out? I'll, uh, I'll come out to you again, and maybe. Yeah, yeah. Better. No, that sounds great. Is that how you warm up? <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you know, you get your blood going. Is uh, uh, are you hot? Are I'm you a hot? hot, hot? But, I, but I'm also got this. Hey, what what am I doing? I'm I, no, no, no. I, I'm the one. I'm sitting here with a hoodie on. I'll take the hoodie off. Oh, Anya, I just noticed the grapes. <laughs> Very nice. We've had this, we have this thing going. Uh, they used to hide the grapes over there. I'm not going to get into it because we've, I've, I've uh, spent too much time on other podcasts uh, discussing the grapes. No, please, go ahead. No. Um, anyway, they used to be in there, like hidden away. Like then, it, as a sort of uh, uh, art Art inside of the plastic, like who the fuck knows? I don't know with these people. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know with these nice. people. It's nice. The only person who gets the thanks mark. I think it's, it's art, pretty. So it's art now. The, it's always been art. It, it, that's why they're plastic. Yeah. Don't you think it would look pretty right in that little? Yeah, because it's sort of like. Um... Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> Try to do one goddamn thing around here. <laughs> there. How's that? How's that for Better. you? An empty table. Better. Good. Good. Um, here's a, here's a funny anecdote. I don't know if uh, Amber ever told you this. Uh, early early on in our dating, uh, I think a th- maybe a year. You know, uh, we've been going out, and uh, I don't know what station was on there we were listening to radio or a mix or something and uh next thing you know we're having sex and in the middle and i mean in the middle of having sex this whatever song was on stopped and your stand-up came on (laughs) and then it was a discussion of like do we keep fucking and (laughs) while margaret's Mm -hmm. i don't remember the bit Mm -hmm. uh I know you were yelling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, or do we just stop and turn it off? Well, what do we do here? <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, but that's a fond memory. <laughs> she said that she put her hand on your mouth to, and kept listening to it. <laughs> she was like, I... she said that she put her hand over your mouth and so that you could, we wouldn't st- would shut up and you would have to listen to it. Oh, that's kind of funny. That sounds like her. Yeah. I don't remember that, but uh, that sounds like her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny. It's good. The last thing you want to hear is your friends stand up. <laughs> you know what? The worst. <laughs> what? The worst. I mean, I'm gonna come. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. No, <laughs> no. 
the worst. That's the worst thing to. I mean, I don't know. I don't really listen to stand up comedy. Well, uh, like no, that. the worst thing would be the emerging broadcast <laughs> thing. The <laughs> oh, you the, emergency the, broadcast. This is a yeah, or the, an Amber Alert. That or, would be pretty, <laughs> pretty bad. Um, or it like it, it's just like a. Or even my own comedy. I don't want to like. Oh, that'd be that, that would, would be, be the, the worst. worst. That would to, be to the listen worst. to your own comedy. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, wow, you're masturbating. Let's make it a full. <laughs> so you're jerking up, and then it's like, well, now suddenly <laughs> you hear your own comedy. Yeah. That's yeah. That's that's the worst. Oh man. What else you got? Do you have anything to promote? Plug. What am I doing? I'm doing stand up. I uh, am in. Uh, M- Minneapolis, Milwaukee, um, uh, Indianapolis, uh, later this month mm-hmm. in February, um, and I'm just touring. I'm doing just doing a bunch of different shows. Like it, it's it's really I like doing shows like in that kind of relaxed pace where you're just going out for a weekend at a time. Yeah, it feels really good to do that. I I'm I prefer touring. I like getting the material and then. Going out and and just and doing it. You Don't know? you get a bus? You get. Uh, a... I've had a bus before, but yeah. I didn't. I didn't the last uh, the last time because my daughter's in school now, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to be gone for. You know, the she was on the bus. We had a yeah. pack and play uh, put on the bus, and uh, and and Amber scheduled a. Uh, she had a book coming out, so she scheduled book uh, signings great. and stuff uh, and readings around oh. the, yeah, it was great. And she was on the bus and Marlo and uh, our nanny and it was great. It was really cool. And it, that was, you know, months and months and months. But um, the last tour, uh, the worst daddy in the world tour was I would go out for like, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday or Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday uh, and then come home. Mm-hmm. So that I wasn't gone all the time, uh, mm-hmm. which kind of was tough because it's a lot of traveling and a lot of connecting flights yeah. and small planes and getting up at seven after yeah. you've done a you know hour and a half show and That's went out hard. drinking and did a meet and greet and all that stuff. So it was tough, and I won't do it again. And and Amber was saying like, God, don't do that again. It was it's fine. Just go out. You know, go out for a, a month or two mm-hmm. at a time, and we'll come out and visit you. And I'll say, yeah, it's just better and easier. Not yeah. that I, that not that I'll have the bus because that's really expensive. It's really expensive, but it's so great. It's great, but I I was able to kind of justify it on some other tours, but mm-hmm. I don't. I, I'm not going to because I'll still be. I'm not going to go out for you know three months. And mm-hmm. when you can like amortize like that, it gets cheaper. But I won't. Uh, you know, I'll be coming back for a week. I'll go out for a month, come back for a week. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And uh, and so I'm not going to get a bus for, you know, unless there was like a specific region where I, you know. But yeah, it's so convenient. It's so great. Um, but yeah, you know. Uh, and I, I did for the first time uh, on this last tour, uh, uh, airport hotels. So, oh, okay. uh, which, um, some are not great. There are a couple really good ones, but the convenience is The insane. convenience is the best. Cause you it's, can just get up and like, well, basically walk to your gate. You do. You walk to the, uh, everyone, you don't have to take a shuttle. You right. basically get up and you know, you save an hour of so sleep, good. um, if not more. It's, and that's so precious. Like, you know, what's a good one? I like the, the TWA one at, um. Is it at LaGuardia or JFK? Uh, why well, I live there, so unless I have a staycation, which yeah. is an absurd notion. I don't understand why people do that. I can't believe people are so fucking gullible to marketing. Like, it's it's, it's genius. I'm going to, I know I live here, but I'm going to go actually spend, you know, 700 bucks in a hotel in a, a section of the town I can get to on the subway. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's a staycation. <laughs> what a dumb fucking idea. Anyway. Uh, so I haven't been, yeah. uh, I, I haven't needed to, but I've, uh, the Denver Airport Hotel, Chef's which, Kiss, which, awesome. Um, it's great. Is it like right in the terminal? It's not in the terminal, but it's uh, adjacent and and you just walk like uh, maybe, 
maybe 25 yards mm -hmm. from the hotel into so like the corridor and uh but it's a nice hotel yeah and uh and they the bar stays open and mm -hmm. we were all it was fairly new when i was there and i went to this um to the bar which was like a big white kind of space age modern horseshoe Sut bar and and everybody we were all all from all different walks of life you know and everybody was like this is great mm -hmm. <laughs> we were all singing its praises and the woman's the bartender is like uh, yeah I'll stay open we're supposed to close at midnight but we'll stay open for you guys and you guys want snacks you know potato chips so like yeah great you know getting bowls of potato chips and the it was great that's the, awesome yeah and so convenient and then you get to yeah sleep till you know 7 45 or 8 yeah. you know and then it's meaningful it's meaningful yeah. when you're like traveling so much it's just like yeah such a that uh, yeah that's so hard it's just like the sleep thing mm -hmm. i i get so much anxiety when i can't go to sleep and it's hard to sleep and after I, a show I drink so much and i keep saying each time you know like okay i'm gonna take it easy tonight no drinking after the show. And then, you know, because you're kind of hungover and out of it. And then by the time, you know, 12 hours later, you walk on stage, you're sobered up and your adrenaline's going. You have mm -hmm. a great show. It's really fun. And then, all right, let's get some drinks. Yeah. And that, you know, night after night. After it's night. really hard. It's really hard. So you're struggling at the Spokane airport, you know. <laughs> where Where is the gate? <laughs> um, do you... I can't remember <laughs> there. Does ma'am, do airports have Kleenex? Is there a place to get a Kleenex? <laughs> like tissue? You know, you know they call it Kleenex, but it's that's the brand name. Um oh, I'm sorry, I thought you worked here. All right. Where are you going? Uh that's not a real place. All right. Anyway. <laughs> I could have that conversation for a while. Yeah, that's a good conversation to have. Yeah. What else you got? Um my dog is in my stomach. Yeah. She's here. I um I just uh I just I, I'm working on a an album and so I'm making some music. And that's always oh, like a great really? thing to do. Yeah, to like travel on a bus to do. Then you, Wait, when you have a what, band. Uh what is the music? I didn't even know you played anything. I play guitar and so I decided to this would be my third album, so this is the album that I want to no make. Shit. I had yeah. no idea, Mark. Yeah, it's cool. Oh wow! Um, I want to make an album that would have oh, like I'm in the Bangles. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to be part of the Paisley Underground, <laughs> so I'm making my album that would have been made uh, would have been released in like 1995. Quite a while ago, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> it's like a 30 year old like record, but um, it's it's inspired by Jellyfish and uh, the oh, yeah. Bangles and. The three o'clock. The three o'clock. Sure, Paisley. Maybe a little uh, Gigolo Ants. Oh, even. God. little so, feeling. Do you know Gigolo Ants? I love their music. I know that you know them. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. They're. Uh, um, God, there was that great, awesome era, that Boston era of Gigolo Ants and uh, uh, Miracle Cave Legion. Dogs and Miracle, Miracle Legion was not Boston. They were Seattle, I think, or I don't know. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, Morphine was Boston, mm -hmm. uh, Cave Dog, Jigglewance, uh, The Bags. Uh, Probably Blake Babies too, right? B Blake, Blake ba Babies? Uh, Galaxy 500. Oh, um, yes, yes. Uh, Lemonheads. Lemonheads. Um, who else? Uh, um, the Figs. Uh, oh, I love the Figs. Yeah, I think they're New York. They yeah. were New York. But um, you ever see Sloan, Canadian band? Yes. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I love Sloan. Right. Um. Wow. So I so I had no idea. Yeah. I, I apologize for that. No, I no. just uh, It's just another sort of thing of like. So you have I've, two albums. Uh, I that yeah that have already come out, and then so this record will be the third one. And that's so, right. Two, let me let me hang on. One two, <laughs> one, two three. Uh, three is right. Yeah. Yes. Is so that right? I'm excited. Uh, Casey, uh, Google uh, uh, two uh, 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 ellipses. Uh, and then w what comes next in the with a shrugging emoji? Okay, got yeah. it. Thank you. Um, what are the first two called? The first one is called Cho Dependent, and the second one is love a good pun. You have to have a pun. <laughs> the second one is called American Myth. So, the, the so that's one, like Miss with a lisp. Myth. This is all stories like about uh, Anna Nicole Smith. Oh. Okay. So there's lots of wow. uh, songs about 
tragedy and blonde. But, but and also in that same vein of the uh, power pop psychedelic uh, Kind stuff? of. It's all sort of power pop, but everything, like I, I really am a power, I, I really think that I'm, I would belong up there with like a Marshall Crenshaw. <laughs> what about the posies? I'm de- well, I, I, I do sing a bit with Ken Stringfellow. Really? We did some okay. house songs. Uh, we did house uh, kind of parties. It's wow, easier I didn't to know do that. with musicians. Like it's easier to do that with the, you go to a house and they host you and they have a party and then you do a concert. Oh, I've, been to, I've been to plenty of those. Yeah. Uh, I even did a, I did a show in uh, Edmonton. Uh, oh, that's I did great. a house party with Ted Leo. Wow. Yeah, me and Ted Leo went to this guy's house in Edmonton. That's cool. Yeah. That's um, cool. It was a Kickstarter thing. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, what do you call it? Like a reward yeah. thing. Um, oh, that's a whole side of you I had no idea, Mark. Yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's wild. So I'll have to, what labels are they on? Um, I put them all out on my own label. Mm-hmm. So it's just not really. Do you have a physical uh copy of them or is it just on uh it's on the know, internet it's the on internet. all of yeah. the spotify or whatever all right cool yeah, every everything is online i mean show dependent show dependent and american glad myth. you got to that you yes. got to that pun um what are some other puns you've uh um incorporated uh um show enough y'all never done that one <laughs> never done show enough mm-hmm. um a one woman show a one woman show okay and hey it's called uh it's called show business, not uh, <laughs> not free, not show fun or <laughs> whatever. Um, show me the money. Show me the money is a good one. I've never used that one. Yeah. Uh, well, you bank some of these and have them for later. Yeah. Uh, uh, um, God, uh, uh, ch- show truck, and it's like a tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want to stretch, you yeah, um, might as well. Uh, um, <laughs> like, and you could do a, a homage. You could do Cho Fly, and it could be like Blow Fly. You remember yeah. you did those party albums with like they're X rated, X rated disco. Ruby Ray Moore? No. Who's Blow Fly? Oh, He's Blow Fly. Own... Blow Fly was a singer. Yeah, his own thing. He, he was, was a great singer. He was like the X rated. Yeah. Disco guy. Yeah, his music is re- really, really naughty. Very, very dirty. Very naughty. Very naughty. Saucy. It's really great, though. Ribald. Really um, beautifully. Lots of horns. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Lots of hornies. <laughs> hornies, horns. Th- uh, there's horns on this record, which is, th- that's that's quite extravagant, and a little bit of strings. So I do veer into a Bur- Burt Baccarat kind of a- Okay, but you, but you psychedelic pop it up. Yeah. Remember, we used we all used to go, I think you were part of this, so we would always go to the, what was the festival they had here in LA, the- International Pop Overthrow. Yeah, International Pop Overthrow. Yes. And uh, really fun shows. And Robbie Rist Robbie was always Rist was in, always in f- nine different bands. He's always in a. He's a very big power pop guy. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's like a. I just love that kind of genre. I, and I just did a show with um, Petra Hayden, mm-hmm. who's also that kind of genre yeah. era. Yeah. So that good. Was a, uh, that was a, that was a fun period to go from the that amazing Boston music scene and then uh, uh, L.A., which was you know I remember were you. Uh, with us when we went to see Weezer that I think it was Doug Benson or Brian Posehn was like hey there's this new band you want to check <laughs> out and they were at the it was an upstairs place on I want to say off of Las Palmas in Hollywood there's like a pl- you go uh-huh. upstairs it's kind of how do you describe it it's I don't even know but it was uh, there was like a really small room mm. and, uh, and it was one of Weezer's early shows I don't remember that but I do remember when um uh, What's the story? Morning Glory came out, and then you and Janine and some other people came over, and we just listened to that record. It was just Oasis. How, how about that? There's so many things. I'm going to sound like an old man now, but uh, but I am. And there's so many things. I feel bad that people don't have get to have this experience, or but like you used to really anticipate a new album Mm -hmm. like uh and you know going back to before i you know before i was you know like when you you would if a beatles album came out you know which i didn't really experience i was too young for that but the idea that radiohead 
Mm -hmm. There's a new Radiohead album going to come. And then we all, you'd go to Virgin or Amoeba. Well, mm -hmm. Amoeba wasn't around then. But, you know, you'd go and you'd get it. And and you'd have a listening party. And yeah. we would all listen to the album. And now it just, they don't they don't do that anymore. They don't have Well, that. also people don't even listen to albums anymore. Right. You right. know, like that's such a rarity too. Is if you, if you get a, if you get a, an album and you listen for, listen beginning to end, it's very rare yeah, yeah. for anybody to do that. Yeah. So albums often aren't produced. With, so this record that I'm making, I'm actually making it so that I it's something to be listened from beginning to end. Whether yeah, what, however sure. they come to it, they will. But there's uh, different sonic things that I I'm trying to put in and that are. What's the name of it? Did you come up with the name? It's called Lucky Gift. Say it's it again. Lucky Gift. Lucky Gift. Yeah. It's How one about, of the songs. Uh, Cho Lucky Gift. Cho <laughs> Ch uh, it's Ch it's Cho Lucky Gift. <laughs> All right. Um, Margaret, I always end the show with a question from my daughter. Mm hmm Okay. And so did I pick one out? I did not. <laughs> I guess I didn't. <laughs> All right, phony, you shut up now. Um, okay, this is a question for Margaret Cho. Where do I look? One? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is from Marlo, who is uh, going to be seven very shortly. Margaret, where do you stand on Israel v. Palestine? Uh, a ceasefire. Ceasefire? There should be a ceasefire. Okay, there, there you go. It's a ceasefire. I mean, there has to be a ceasefire. Yes. Isn't that what you think? Doesn't I she do. think? Does she I think do. that? Does she believe that too? Um, I, She knows way more about this shit than I do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she's versed in it. Um, All right, well, let's, let's, let me give you this follow-up question. Okay. Uh, This is for real. This is a yeah. real question from Marlo. I love this question too. How much money would Donald Trump get from the Tooth Fairy? <laughs> that's a real, that's a real question. Well, that's does he have way. any teeth to give? To you, you can't just ask uh, the Tooth Fairy. It's a, it, it's a transaction. It's not like the Tooth Fairy gives you anything. The Tooth Fairy gives you money in exchange for teeth. Mm -hmm. So I don't think he has teeth to give. I think the assumption is, were. A tooth to come out. Were Donald Trump to have a tooth, whether it's extracted by somebody else, a professional, it gets knocked out, it just comes out on its own. Were he to have that situation and he put the tooth under the pillow, how much money would Donald Trump get from the tooth fairy? Well, the going rate, I think it's always been a dollar per tooth. But you know who you should ask? The lesbian periodontist. Do you remember that? <laughs> the lesbian periodontist do you remember that um the, the oh no international I know what you, yes, lesbian the, the the international right, the, conspiracy of lesbian periodontists yes, it was an early bit about uh what was it it, it was, was like the, the the cartel the the <laughs> the lesbian dental cartel or the, something it, the lesbian periodontist i get to do my redneck voice because people didn't know who i was so they didn't know if it was real or not like I've had just about enough. I would, it would always, it would come after, that's what it was. It would come after somebody who, I'd go up after somebody and whatever they said, it didn't matter. I would just have a, have an issue. I just want to talk about, you know, these uh, people up here, you know, getting up here, trying to get laughs, talking about their genitalia and whatnot and da, da, da. And then, yeah, it would the guy would veer off into the, the lesbian dental cartel. Yeah, yeah, I think that's what it was. The lesbian periodont, the lesbian yeah. periodontist. Um, yeah, that's an old. Uh, but no, I'm not going to ask them because that's a question for you. Yeah. So, so you're saying the going rate? is I a, believe it's still going to be no matter who the tooth is from. Mm -hmm. It's still a dollar a tooth. Okay. I believe that. Well, there's there's the answer. That that it, it's, he would get a dollar per tooth. Okay. Unless um, one time I got a five dollar bill for a tooth, that I don't know why. I think they just didn't have change. I the tooth fairy didn't have yeah. change. Yeah, that's tough. Um, we are we. You know, she's got uh, two teeth uh, gone now, and we are giving her Bitcoin. <laughs> 
Uh, it was the first ah. tooth was Bitcoin, and the second tooth was an NFT of uh, Funky Monkey. Or oh, whatever. yeah, I like that. Yeah, and um, and then uh, you know, four hundred one k. All right, Margaret Show. Thank you so much for coming thank down you. here. Where are you living now? I live up the street. I live really close by. No kidding. Yeah. Oh, great. Don't um, you li- you live you live in New York? I live in New York. Yeah. Or don't you live in Hudson Valley? Uh, no, I have a place in Sullivan County. Mm. Um, been there for since before I met my wife. I mean, going on seventeen years this year. Wow! Yeah, and you have a telescope. <laughs> do you know that story? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. I. Uh, it's. Uh, I think Amber and I talked about this when we did our episode. I think, but I was. Uh, this is before I met her, but I was. Sitting there, I was uh, upstate, me and my dog, Ollie, and um, and I had just done something that paid me a bunch of money, and uh, I was like, oh, I was drunk too, and I was drunk, drunk and or high, and uh, sitting on my deck, beautiful night in the woods, rural, very rural, just a you know, tiny little town, and, uh, and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to get a telescope, and I stupidly... Uh, Googled and I looked at some telescopes. And I was like, this one clicked by, put my credit card in, and uh, about, and I had it sent uh, because I don't have mail because it's really in the, in the woods. So I have a P.O. box. And uh, for some reason, I couldn't go to a P.O. box. So I uh, had it sent to my, to the guy who made the house, uh, constructed the house, built the house. Uh, um, who was a couple miles away. And then about, I totally forgot about it. And then about three, four weeks later, I get a call from the guy going, hey, uh, you got, did you get a telescope? And I was like, yeah, yeah, great, awesome. Uh, I'll come down and pick it up. Uh, what kind of car do you have? Uh, the GMC Acadia? Yeah, that's not gonna, uh, that's not gonna fit. I'm like, what? No, I'll put the seats down. Mm, no. And I go over there, he had to get his, uh, this massive truck because it was ridiculously big. And I never even stopped to think about it. I didn't look at it. And it's fucking, it's like, I want to say standing up, it's, I'm 5'9", so it's probably 6'5", uh, close to 7 feet. And then, and the, you know, the carton it's in is, you know, because it's all fragile glass and mirrors. It It's, and I couldn't figure it out, couldn't figure out how to... Uh, put it together, got on the phone twice with this guy who's trying to walk me through it. And I'm like, and eventually I just had to donate it to a Montessori school. Wow. It's, it was ridiculous. It was the dumbest. I was just drunk. And, yeah. and I had a bunch of money. I was like, oh, got this telescope. It'll be great. <laughs> and uh, I <laughs> could not make it work. And it's not meant for me. Yeah. It's meant for people. Like a planetarium. Yes. <laughs> it's, it was the one of the dumbest things drunk purchasing things oh, well. i've ever done uh anyway yeah thank you thank you all right <laughs> that was a headgum podcast <laughs>